it's Jacoby and it's a new year and I am already lining up projects like mad and so I thought I would just get started and jump right in with a new video about a project that has been in the back of my mind for a while and I finally had the perfect opportunity to do it. So a little bit of backstory and then we'll jump right in. Um, one of my favorite artists ever since I was very, very young is Alphonse Mucha. I hope you can see that. I'm, I don't have a tripod, so I'm just going to do this hand camera work as best as I possibly can. Um, a lot of you actually are probably already familiar with his work. He worked primarily in um, advertising and theater and did a lot of commercial work. So as a result, his stuff is everywhere. I'm a big fan of just the Art Nouveau style in general. I find it just so visually satisfying. I love the way that it's always balanced, even though it's not always symmetrical. And um, it's just really beautiful. When I made my Mermaid Parade costume last year, I was partly through the designing of the dress and I just said, you know, randomly, like, I kind of am making myself look like a, like a Mucha painting. And it put this idea in the back of my head that one of these days I might actually like to make a headpiece to kind of imitate that circular design that you see often around a lot of his figures. Then guess who ended up having an exhibit at my local art museum? So of course I had to go, and of course they wouldn't let you take pictures inside, but they had a photo booth where we could play around. Now, like a lot of my projects, if you've watched some of my other videos, it can be very, very different, and depending on the materials that you get a hold of. So, I'm going to walk you through the basics as much as I can, and show you what I chose to do, but the idea is that hopefully you will be inspired and you can make your own version of this. So, stay tuned, and I will take you into my studio and show you what materials I'm using. Okay, so here are all of my supplies. Um, let's see, where to even start? Because there's a lot going on here, and this is one of those projects where you can use as much or as little as you want. So I'm just going to show you what I have to work with. Hopefully this will give you, you know, just some ideas about how you can build the basic structure. And then when it comes to all the individual components, you can just use whatever it is that appeals to you or whatever works with your theme. So the things that you will definitely need are... And this headband, which I have already decorated. Now, if you watched my mermaid crown tutorial, it's actually a very similar process. That is going to work together with that, and I will show you in a little bit how that will be used to keep all of this on my head. <laughs> the other materials I have are a hot glue gun and hot glue. I have my plastic discs, and usually these are used for weaving um, with yarn or embroidery floss, but I am using them to create that mosaic effect. Here, hopefully the glare doesn't cover that up for you. I thought this would recreate that in a really cool way. I have spray paint. This one's already painted. I will be painting this one to match, and I will be spray painting my discs. Snowflakes from the dollar store. Fall leaves. I believe these came from Michael's, but you can often find these sorts of things at the dollar store as well. Mod Podge. Some flowers from the dollar store. Um, these two papers came from Joanne Fabrics. They are really heavily glittered. They might even be a little bit too shiny, but I plan on layering them underneath my discs like that, so I really wanted something that would come through. So. That's pretty much it. So the first step in assembling my headpiece is to make sure that these two headbands go together at the right angle because this is going to be 
the structure that holds the entire thing on, so it has to be nice and sturdy. I've got both of my wreaths turned backwards. Now, if you've never worked with a wreath form before, they're typically not flat. And if I turn it this way, I think you can kind of see the two outer circles of wire are farther back and the two inner circles of wire are further forward. So the back of the wreath is concave and this is the side that we actually want to have facing forward. My top headband is going to go like this and then the front headband, the one with the actual decoration on it, is going to go in front like that. So you'll notice that I'm not doing any decoration on the bottom portions of the wreath because this is going to get cut off. This will be on my head and this section is going to go behind my head and probably rest against my back. So it'll look something like that. The other thing that I have to work out is how I am going to attach the outer circle to the inner circle. So I hope that you can hear me over the sound of the heater. It's a very cold day today and the heater keeps coming on. Um, but this is what I have so far. I'm really pleased with it in terms of the sturdiness of it. It's actually pretty solid. The only thing I did notice that's going to warrant an adjustment to my original plan is that this whole piece wants to lean a little bit far forward forward on my forehead and I noticed that as I tried to force it back it seemed to want to pop off. So I went ahead and let the glue dry in the position that it seemed to want to be in and the result is now if I attach the outer ring straight to the inner one the result is that it looks straight but as soon as I turn my head you can kind of see that it's leaning way far forward like that. And I want it so that when I look directly at you, it gives the illusion of two dimensionality. So that just means that I'm going to have to adjust the way that I secure my paint sticks. On. Okay, are you ready for this? Oh, <laughs> that is so extra. <laughs> oh my gosh, I only have one paint stick and it's totally holding up. Yay! I'm so excited! I was actually kind of worried that this wasn't going to work out and I'm like, did I just start this epic project and I'm gonna end up having to trash it and pretend like it never happened. But I mean, I totally knew that this was going to work from the beginning. I never had any doubts about it. At all. I can actually dance in this thing. I was expecting to like, oh, I'll be at the masquerade party and I'll just be like that person that's like super aloof. Probably not like, you know, not gonna be like head banging in it, but you know, I do a little hip action, a little, a little neck and shoulder action. Oh my God. Okay, now I'm just being stupid.
So I'm actually having a hard time getting this whole thing in the frame. <laughs> Hopefully you can see it. That is the new and improved design. And I have to say, as scary as it was to rip that paint stick off of there, I am so glad that I decided to do it. Not only is it a much more delicate and I think more attractive design, it's way less distracting and it's more in line with the theme of Art Nouveau. Now, this is my dilemma, and I was debating whether or not to just fix it or to show it to you and then fix it. Um, I made the dowel, I think, just the tiniest bit longer than the paint stick was, and so the result is that this outer circle sits a lot higher on my head. It was supposed to be lower and coming more out of my shoulders. So the question is, do I want to take this whole thing apart again? Yeah, I think I am going to end up doing that. It's just not quite there yet. And I think it's worth it to go ahead and, and do this the right way since it is such an extreme thing <laughs> that I'm doing here. So this is just a quick update because I think I figured out the most elegant solution to my whole like positioning problem with the outer ring. I've already taken the top one out and then on the side one I've already yanked it out and you can see it's kind of falling apart on me right now. I'm going to cut an, another inch and a half or so from the bottom of the two dowels on the side. See how loose that is? It'll allow me to pull it down and get it into the position that I want. Okay, so finally I got the positioning of my dowels correct and my inner and my outer rings are exactly where I wanted them to be. Now you might notice from this angle, it's two concentric rings if you look at it from dead on in the front. But as you can see when it's on the table, they are at wildly different angles. And that's actually something I wasn't expecting. And that's why I think it took me several tries to get these dowels in the right position because I just refused to believe that it was gonna end up having to be like that in order to look like this from the front. <laughs> but it's done. And so now all I have to do is attach my medallions. 